Hey guys, welcome back to the Design, Creativity and Technology channel. My name's Aaron. Sorry I didn't upload a video last week, but um, I did something really, really dumb. Uh, my sole uh, CNC machine here had a small coolant leak from the rear of the machine, and uh, so I fabricated the steel plate to go in behind there uh, to cover the casting where it was leaking from. Now the reason the coolant was leaking uh, was because Back in the day, I think when these machines were originally servo motor maybe, uh, sorry, stepper motor, uh, they actually had to cut out a bit of the casting to fit the large big servo motor in there. And that cut into a well that stopped coolant from leaking out the back of the machine. Now, so I'll have told me they've fixed this problem in the, in the latest models because they've uh, redesigned the entire chip tray and everything like that. So my machine is a, is a previous design machine. So anyway, silly me, uh, when I'm fitting this plate, uh, disconnected the servo motor encoder. Now the machine was powered off. What I didn't realize was uh, the LNC uses an absolute encoder system. There are no limit switches on this machine. It has battery backups in the drivers and there's a constant continuity down to those encoders. So if this table was to move in transit or to move anyway, the encoder knows, hey, you've moved. Uh, the position has changed and it will update in the controller. So uh, Muggs Malloy here disconnected the encoder, fitted my plate, fired the machine back up and dum dum, big trouble guys, it had lost its Y value, pretty much lost its guts on Y. So... Son of a bitch! You done messed up anymore! I totally cracked my pants. <laughs> Uh, the first thing I did was contact uh, Mr. Zhu Xiao in China uh, via Skype and I said, need your help, you know, urgently. Uh, within five seconds, he came back, what's the problem? You know, what is your problem? I said, look, I've done this. I'm an idiot. I've disconnected the code. I should have known better. But hey, he goes, no problem. We can fix it. I'll get uh, one of my technicians by the name of Mr. Chan onto it straight away. Within a minute, Mr. Chan is uh, SMSing me via Skype and going, okay, what's your problem? I told him, he said, look, I'll get back to you. I'll write you up a document, a procedural document uh, with instructions and get you going again. I felt so embarrassed, guys, really. I should have known better. Yeah, okay, um, it was just a dumb, dumb mistake. So guys, if you buy a CNC machine with an absolute encoder system, do not unplug the, the wires, even when it's powered off. Now, I don't know whether that would change if it was powered on and I disconnected it, but I don't know. I'm not an electrician. Uh, you know, I'm not a technician, so I can't answer that. So anyway, guys, uh, the, the next day I had the documentation Mr. Chan sent me. It was a Word document. I went through it step by step, and it took me a couple of hours because uh, my own stupid fault. I don't really uh, knew the deep inside the, the parameters of this controller. Uh, so I had to change my password level to get into the actual maker uh, menu to actually fix it, guys. So anyway, um, it's back up and running, guys, and I'm so stoked. I was so, how would you say, uh, I was gutted when I did it. I really was. I thought, I'm such an idiot. Why did I do that? Anyway, look, it's back up and running. Um, I've been cutting all day on it. I even made some stuff. I had um, my good friend Peter Michelini, who works with me also over at PM Customs. Uh, he came over for a day and had a play on the machine as well. And uh, we made some of these really trick nuts. And I'll show you these in a minute off camera. Uh, these were designed by another school teacher friend of mine. Uh, they're a spa uh, nut. It encapsulates a brass nut and uh, it's designed in four pieces. So you don't have to disassemble the whole uh, mechanism to get into it. Uh, I'll show you that. So. We machine these here on the sole and uh, sizes were spot on.
I had the um, phase change converter running all day, not a hiccup, not a problem. Took some really beefy cuts. Uh, we were playing around with feeds and speeds. We upped the RPM, we upped the feed rate, and it was hogging material. I tell you, I was really, really impressed. At one time, the spindle load was going up to about 150%. Uh, I started to get a little bit of pucker factor, if you know what I mean, but anyway, all good. Uh, today, I had it running as well, and I finished off my dominoes, and uh, I'll flick over some of this footage now for you guys to uh, have a look. So anyway, guys, look, just want to thank you. Uh, thank you for following on. Thank you for watching my channel, for subscribing and commenting. Uh, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be making videos. Let's be honest, okay? Um, you know what I mean? There's uh, YouTube. It's very hard to make an income out of YouTube, guys. Uh, as you know, my full-time job is a school teacher, and uh, that's what it will remain. I, I won't never be a full-time YouTuber anyway. So I've had a few subscribers reach out to me say, hey Aaron, oh, I keep missing your latest videos, etc, etc. Guys, if you are subscribed to my channel and you'd like to get a notification, uh, Google and YouTube have changed the way they do it now, so you must click that bell. So near the subscribe button, there's like a bell, click the bell, and any time I upload a new video, you'll get a notification. If you don't click the bell, um, you'll probably only get notifications every now and then. Now apparently, a lot of people who upload regularly, this was annoying some subscribers, so uh, YouTube put that bell in there to stop that. I don't know. I thought if you subscribe, you'd want to know when you uploaded the video. But anyway, guys, look, thanks for following along. Uh, like I said, thank you to my subscribers. And uh, guys, ch check some of my comments, guys. There's some really good YouTubers in there. Uh, Andrew, uh, I'll flick up Andrew's thing. Go and check him out. He's doing some crazy fourth axis machining, making paintball guns and stuff like that. He leaves me for dead. I don't know why he's watching my channel. I should be watching his channel. But anyway, guys, and it's really anyway, it's really nice to keep in contact with you. And uh, by all means, make sure you check out uh, Paul Frink has got a Facebook uh, page for the Soul CNC machine. So come on over to Facebook and check us out there, guys. There's a few users up there now. Spoiler alert, guys. What I'm currently working on at the moment, I'm doing a custom Holly adapter plate for a square ball. Uh, old school muscle car here in Australia, and that's coming real soon. Uh, another spoiler alert, I'll be working with Kevin Ellingson. Uh, we'll be designing some, uh, this will be a 3D toolpath, uh, some real gnarly Colt 45 grips. Now, as you know, I live in Australia, and it's pretty much illegal for me to own a handgun unless I belong to a shooting or a pistol club and that sort of thing. Uh, Kevin's going to CAD design these Colt 45 grips. He'll cam it up and I'll machine them on the sole. I'll ship them back over to America and he'll uh, cut loose with his Colt 45, guys. So some good videos coming up. In closing, guys, you know my line. Keep spinning bits and ripping chips and I'll catch you on the next video.